name is holy. You are so holy to me. I call you holy. Your name is holy. Holy you are and holy you be.
is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. At this time, I would invite you to pause with me as we go to God in prayer uh, that we might ask for God's blessings upon today's worship service as well as this morning's message. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your gift, which is your presence in our lives. Uh, Lord, we ask uh, once again, that you would search our hearts, search our minds, and that which is not pleasing your sight. We pray that you would move it from us right now, Lord. Help us to set aside anything that might distract us, but help us to focus in on you and your holy and precious word as we have gathered and we are viewing this worship service. We pray now, Lord, that even the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight for you, our strength and our redeemer. Jesus of Christ, we pray. Amen. At this time, I would call your attention to a portion of scripture found in the book of Luke. Luke chapter 13, I'll be reading beginning at verse 10. On a Sabbath, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues. And a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he put his hand on her, and immediately she straightened up and praised God. Now the grass withers. The flower fadeth, but the word of our God endures forever. This morning I wanted to preach and to talk from this thought, uh, don't panic, don't panic. Uh, this past week we all experienced in some way uh, the shortage of gas um, that as a result of uh, what the media said was a cyber attack which uh, shut down uh, a major pipeline um, that ran up the southern eastern coast, uh, the Colonial Pipeline. And, and, and so those um, who are familiar with that, it is a pipeline that supplies fuel all up the eastern shore. And so as a result of this cyber attack, um, we found ourselves having to deal with um, the reactions to that. Many... Uh, those who reported on it uh, suggested to us um, that it was not the direct result of the cyber attack that caused the shortage of gas in the Carolinas and other southern states. Uh, but officials said that it was the response of the news by people. Uh, in other words, uh, when we began to rush out and fuel our cars and fuel containers and fuel multiple cars, all at the same time, we, in effect, created a shortage. It was the panic of the people um, that caused uh, this shortage, I believe. Um, not only was it the panic of people who caused the shortage, but it was what one psychologist said. It was the, a reminder of the past trauma that many of us have experienced as a result of COVID-19 and, and with the fear and the concern and the worry that somehow we would be without um, the necessary fuel though we might travel, we began to, to, to line up in numbers of the hundreds and to, and to search all over the city, all over the state in order to find fuel. Interesting enough, many of us sought out fuel and with nowhere to go, for we are still yet um, a part of the lockdown, and yet it was something about the fear of not having that caused us to panic and to cause this shortage that we are still experiencing in some way. I also believe that part of the, the problem um, with regards to what has taken place is, is that we have yet um, to, to come to the realization that, that we must, um, in moments of crisis, uh, not simply look to ourselves and our immediate needs, but we must begin to look to our neighbors and look to the long-term needs for in, in looking and being so short-sighted, we forgot about those who, who need um, fuel in order to get back and forth. We forgot about the few 
that is needed for our school buses and our tr mass transportation, we forgot about all those other things, our ambulances and all those other emergency essential vehicles that need gas, all because we could not look beyond ourselves and look beyond the panic that this crisis has created. And so it, is, it is, seems to me that there is a lesson in that which we experience um, in these past days. There's a lesson that can be found as we consider the text um, in which I've read for you hearing. There are some, there are things, there are lessons to be learned as we consider um, this portion of scripture. So I would invite you to join me at this time as we consider this portion of scripture in which we find um, a woman who the gospel writer describes as someone who had uh, been uh, in, with an infirmity of an evil spirit and this evil spirit had, had perplexed her and had, had oppressed her for some 18 years and so she finds herself on this day, the Bible says on the Sabbath day, um, she finds herself in the temple where Jesus is teaching and the tragedy um, of this story is not just that she has had to experience these some 18 years dealing with this infirmity which has her bent over looking down to the ground. The tragedy is she had access to the temple. She had access to the church. She had access to religious folk and religion. But religious folk and religion could not relieve her of her infirmity. She, she, I believe she had, this was not the first time I believe she had found herself looking for an answer, found herself in desire of a healing, or she simply had begun, be, simply was content in her situation, um, believing that, that this was her fate for her entire life. But then um, along comes a man named Jesus who is teaching in the synagogue and he's teaching those uh, other uh, religious folk and as he he teaches it according to your bible it says that he saw this woman and therein lies um, the, the first reason why we ought not panic um, the reason why we ought not panic first and foremost is because God sees us and God not only sees us God understands our situation and and God did not simply uh, see uh, this woman through the eyes of Jesus. Uh, Jesus saw this woman in her suffering. He saw her in her humanity. He saw her as a person. He saw her in need. And just as he see, saw her in need, Jesus also sees us. And he sees you um, when you find yourself in need. He sees the suffering you're going through. He sees uh, that which takes place all around. Jesus saw uh, the, the dilemma that was about to be upon us, uh, but yet we forgot the fact that Jesus still sees and Jesus still hears and he cares. And so as a result of that, we, we forgot those basic things that scripture teaches us. And yet we found ourselves once again panicking. And I would say to us that we ought not in the future uh, resort to simple panic uh, just because uh, of what circumstances might arise. Uh, for we have to remember that God is still in control and God is still able to do um, those things that others cannot. And so as we uh, consider this woman, uh, she uh, is, is woman who will be considered blessed. She will be blessed because of the presence of Jesus. And so Jesus uh, says um, to this woman, um, um, you are healed, which tells us that not only does God see us, but God is also speaking to us. God speaks to us in numerous ways. Each and every day, God is speaking to us. And oftentimes, he speaks to us in that still, small voice. It is a voice that oftentimes gets drowned out by the things that are taking place all around us. But if we're able to set aside our fear, if we're able to set aside those things that scare us and cause us to panic, we'll be able to hear God's voice and to know that God is present with us. And so Jesus says to this woman, um, um, you are healed. And after having said a word to this woman, he, he does something that is also significant. The third thing he does is that he lays his hands on her. Uh, maybe some of you might think that 
all these things may be necessary in order for her to be healed. But all you've got to do is to read your Bible and know that Jesus does not need to see her to heal her. He doesn't need to say anything to heal her. He doesn't even need to be present in order that he might heal her. So why is that Jesus not only sees her, speaks to her, and touches her? For he does these things not because he needs to do them, but he does them for her benefit. For I believe this woman who has held and had this infirmity for so many years never had anyone see her. Yes, they saw her, but they didn't see her as a person. Even in the temple, even the religious folk did not truly see her. And she needed, among other things, not just a healing, but she needed her humanity restored. And these things that Jesus has done for her restores her humanity to let her know that she is a child of God. For if you continue to read, he says to those around him that this is a woman who is a child of Abraham. In other words, she also is entitled to the same inheritance that you all are entitled to. But for some reason, those in the church thought that somehow they were better than others. And as a result of that, um, this woman um, had to continue to suffer um, because of the blindness of those all around her. But yet, in the midst of all uh, that she's had to go through, uh, on this Sabbath day, on this day of the Lord's day, um, she receives a healing. And not only does she receive the healing, she responds in the way that, that all of us ought to respond. She began to praise God. And by praising God, she thanked God for all that he had done. She thanked God for seeing her, restoring her humanity. He, she thanked God for, for speaking to her, to remind her, to let her know that he is still present in her lives. She thanked him for touching her to know that God's still able to heal, but yet the tragedy and the tension in the text is not as a result of what has taken place, but it is a result of the response of religious folk. For if you continue to read in this 13th chapter, you'll find that those in charge, those responsible for teaching the law, teaching tradition, don't celebrate as she praises. As a matter of fact, they do just the opposite. They are angry at the fact that Jesus has broke a tradition. He broke a tradition by healing on the Sabbath day. Uh, it's amazing to me how some religious folk um, love their traditions more than they love the people. It's amazing to me how folk are so blinded by the religious laws and the religious ways that they fail to see the humanity in one another. It's amazing to me uh, how folk, in spite of what they see, uh, fail to see the importance of having the ability to be in relationship with a God that is able to save. For they knew and read about him, but I believe they did not have a relationship with him. And so in, even though they were experts in the law. Uh, the one thing the law could not do was heal. The one thing the law could not do was to restore humanity. The one thing the law could not do was to be present in those times of trouble. And so as we consider our current situation, as we think about uh, what we've got to do next, um, I don't know when this shortage will be over. As a matter of fact, I don't know what the next trial of tribulation that is around the corner. But I would say to all of us, uh, we cannot afford to panic every time trouble shows up on our door. We cannot afford to be afraid and live in fear. God did not give us the spirit of fear. Uh, we cannot afford uh, to, to ask ourselves, what must I do when God has made it clear that he is speaking to us? He is uh, healing us. He has his hand on us. He, he knows where we are. Uh, he sees us and he sees every situation, every circumstance. And so instead of panicking, we ought to turn that panic into a praise and to praise God anyhow. Uh, praise him in times of trouble. Praise him even in a gas shortage. We ought to yet still praise him. So wherever we find ourselves, uh, not because the gas shortage is not real, but to know that God is real. Why? Because I can feel him even in my soul. And so 
as we continue, as we walk this Christian journey, as we study, as we do that which God has required of each of us, let us be the examples to the world. While the world is out panicking, let those who walk by faith and not by sight uh, walk with a self uh, sense of assurance, knowing that God is with us and God will keep us and God will guide us and watch over us all the days to come. May God bless you and may heaven continue to shine upon you in all the days to come. God bless you and take care.